Hi there and welcome to another workout for you to row along to. Now today's session is going to be tough. This is going to be one of the ones that's really going to, well, if you do it right, of course, it should really leave you completely, uh, well, exhausted really, to be honest. Now on paper, it doesn't sound like it should, because what we're going to do is we're going to row two minutes uh, three times. That's only six minutes worth of work. How's that going to get you um, destroyed? Uh, especially when you factor in there's going to be four minutes worth of rest in between. Now the truth is, it's because those two minutes you are going to do at your 1k pace. Now, how you say your 1k pace is up to you. Your 1k pace is either your 1k pace. It is or, it is or, which that's not English, <laughs> or it's the average of the pace that you did week one, session one of this 1k plan at, or it is your 2k pace minus five seconds. Whatever one of them is the fastest, I want that to be what you're aiming for, and I want you to try and see if you can go faster. Okay. Okay, that should, over the course of the six minutes worth of work, uh, really leave you completely, wow, that's been a really hard workout, okay? Now, we're going to start off with a 10-minute warm-up anyway. So in terms of your rowing time, you're going to have a 10-minute warm-up, you're going to have that six minutes worth of rowing, you're going to have four minutes rest in between, plus you're going to have a two-minute cool-down. So in terms of your time on this machine today, you're still going to be here for a while, but it's only six minutes of absolute everything you can give into the machine. Now, remember, it's not fly and die. I don't want you to row really, really fast for a minute and then fade and go, I can't put any more into it. I want you to still pace it. You can get through those two minutes, but I want you to put everything in to those two minutes. All right, there we go. So that's my prelude for what today's session is. Now our 10 minute warm up. Uh, I'm going to do similar to how I normally do it, but uh, we're going to actually do the faster stuff a little bit more towards the end of it. Okay. If you've not done my 10 minute warm up before, it's absolutely fine. Just follow me. I'll keep you right in terms of how fast and stroke rates and stuff to get through this warm up. All right. But before we get anywhere near this 10 minute warm up, we have to set up our machine. Now on a concept two, like what I am using, <laughs> good English again, head to the front and set your drag factor to where you want it to be. Now if you don't know about drag factor, please check out the video I have here on the YouTube channel. If you know how to set it, I recommend round about 130. If you know absolutely nothing about drag factor, just set it between four and five, because too low isn't the issue, too high is the issue. If you're on a non-concept two, just set it, you get a nice feel from the stroke, but you don't have to heave and fight against it, all right? Next up, if you have a machine where you're able to adjust the height of your monitor, set it to eye height. And finally, if you have the ability to change your foot stretcher height, set it to a point where you're able to come to the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically comfortably. If you're set too high, it might get a little bit tough to get there. If you're set too low, it might be a bit too easy and you go scooting straight past that vertical position. Knees are almost whacking off the front of the machine and pfft, it really just it, it, it harms your power output really is all I'm really worried about there. So we're going to start this off at around about 20 strokes a minute, okay? We're going to do two minutes of 20 strokes a minute at uh, a gentle pace. I want you just to think about enough of a push from your feet that you connect that power to your hands. But remember, this is a warm up, okay? And we've got 10 minutes of it, so you don't have to start off all guns blazing here, all right? Here we go. In three, two, one. Let's go. So I want you to think and feel that push from the feet into the machine, adding power, okay? So push, and you add that power into the machine by connecting your hands at the same time, okay? So when you push with your feet, that is the moment that your hands connect the handle to whatever your machine uses to go. <laughs> so if it's a water rower you're on, the moment you push, your feet into the foot plates, your hands connect the handle to the strap, to the water blade, and you should hear that accelerating whoosh as you do it, okay? It's the same on concept two. You hear that acceleration as you connect your feet to the handle and that power surges into the machine. That helps to be in a good position as you do so. And that means a forwards tilt towards the front of the machine and arms straight, okay? So nice and straight in front of you. 
push, push. Hold that forward tilt till your legs are halfway done. Right, in three strokes time, we're gonna go up to 22 strokes a minute for one minute. So here we go. Just a little bit harder push with the legs. Should see your drive speed go up a little bit. And then if you match that by slightly faster recovery too, that should see your stroke rate go up to 22. And as a result, you should have found you're going two or three seconds faster pace-wise too. It's magic. Just by increasing stroke rate, by pushing harder with the legs, you go faster. Okay, back down to 20 strokes a minute. And ease off the pace a tiny bit. And what we're going to do is at the end of this minute, we're going to go up to 24 strokes a minute for 30 seconds. And then we're going to just ease off the stroke rate and the pace for 30 seconds. Then we're going to keep increasing until the end of this 10 minute warm up and hopefully that'll get you used to the power and stroke rate ready for today's main session so three two one here we go now 24 so again push harder with the legs to give you a faster drive speed Complement that by getting the handle away and a faster recovery. And you should have found your pace is shot right up. One more. Now just take it easy. Pick a stroke rate and effort where it just feels like you're paddling. Just keep moving. Put in a little bit of effort from your legs, but not loads. Just keep moving. We're going up to 26 strokes a minute after this one. So here we go then. Push. So faster. And your drive speed is controlled by how much you push with those legs. If you've got that forwards tilt and arms straight, you should feel that power going into the machine. Last one. Just paddle for 30 seconds. Keep moving. Think about nice straight arms at the front. Practice almost in slow motion what you're going to do in 15 seconds time when we go up to 28 strokes a minute. One more here. Here we go. Now if you have a 2K training pace, an average two kilometer time, child time, this pace should be about five seconds slower than that average. Just keep pushing with your legs. One more. And let's paddle. Oh, set my watch to a row. 
We're up to 30 in the next one. It's a nice easy one. It's one stroke every two seconds. And this should get you probably about three seconds faster than you were just rowing at. Two more. One more stroke. Let's go up to 30. Push. To really connect those feet to the machine. Push the machine away from you as you push in that power. That's the way to get the rate up and the power in. One more. Paddle. And then let's see if you can climb up to 32 for the next one. This is a workout in itself really, isn't it? Keep moving though. Three, two, one. Let's get that stroke rate up. It starts to become just as much about that fast return when you get up this high. Handle comes in, straight back out. Nice and smooth, but nice and fast. All right, one more. And then the last one, we're aiming for 34 strokes a minute, which is round about where I'm hoping my stroke rate will be for today's main session. Okay, two more. One more. Here we go. So push that power in. Get that faster drive phase. And then the hands come away. Try not to pause at either end of the stroke. And that'll keep the chances of your rate staying up, up. Last one. Now let's paddle home. So I covered, well, so far 2,350 meters just in the warm up. And I certainly feel my heart rate is up, my breathing rate is up, and hopefully after a quick rest to explain one more time what today's session is, my body then will have recovered and supercharged itself ready for today's main session. Okay then, so today's session is going to be two minutes at your 1k pace and your 1k stroke rate obviously with four minutes rest and you're going to do it three times. So two, then four rest, two, then four rest, two and you're done, okay? Now the intensity has to be right up there. This is a 10 out of 10 in terms of effort to try and get into the machine. Uh, when it comes to speech, I recommend don't try and speak to anyone and in fact, I am not going to speak as much as I normally do during these intervals. I will po probably still, knowing me, I'll still blurt out the odd thing. But this is one of those times where I really wish YouTube would have like a dual audio stream because what I'm going to do is I'm, well, I'm contemplating putting on just a little bit of music underneath this uh, just to kind of keep it, have something going while I'm rowing and not speaking. And ideally what I'd do is I'd do one version that had music, one version that didn't have music and then you could just pick your audio stream like a, like a DVD, remember them, or a Blu-ray, whatever. So that's what we're doing, okay? So two minutes, hard and fast, okay? Get that rate up, get that speed up and try to hold it for two minutes. If you're rowing at 30, four strokes a minute ish that's only 68 strokes okay so even if you just count down from 68 and see and then open your eyes and go oh no i've still got 50 meters to go uh, or 50 or 15 seconds to go or whatever so that's kind of a, a good way to do it um but it's just two minutes you have to hang on for 
and then you get a rest, and then you do it again, and then you uh, get a rest, and then you do it again, okay? You with me on this? So remember, stroke rate is about pushing hard with the legs, and then getting the hands away over your knees, rock over your hips, and then come forwards again. That's how you'll get that stroke rate up nice and high, okay? Because stroke rate plus power equals pace. Well done. Top of the class. Are you ready for this? I hope so. I'll see you in two minutes. In three, two, one, go. Push with the legs, remember. Get that connection with the handle. Don't overcook your pace. Hold your 1K. Just past 30 seconds. Remember to breathe. A good pattern. Compliment the stroke with your breathing. One minute. Keep that posture up. Thirty seconds. Fifteen. Last one. Oh. One forty one, which was my average on week one, session one. Sorry, I've got four minutes to recover and talk to you. I hope you don't mind the fact that I'm a little more silent than normal, but it's important to concentrate on my own rowing as well as being a dancing monkey for you guys. Oh, right, heart rate's down, it finished about 145 I think, I'm down at 90, bang on 90 now after a minute and a quarter. When it comes to heart rate, I don't really train with it, I don't really do heart rate zones for my heart rate, I don't really look at it much when I'm rowing either. Is it can tend to put me off if I look at my heart rate and I see it's up at like 90% of max and I'm only 10 minutes into, into like a half hour time trial then mentally that starts to say to like set off alarm bells for me where I'm like oh surely surely this is too much for me so I tend not to really pay attention to heart rate during a row but I will pay attention to it in rest periods like right now right so we're two minutes done in this, this rest I want to make sure that you've had a drink. Um, keep moving. Some people will like to do some light rowing to move. Make sure it's light if that's what you're doing, okay? Really gentle, just up and down, up and down stuff. Or you can do what I do, which is just rock backwards and forwards. That must be said, let's have a drink.
Oh. But my kind of inner glutes, if you want to call it that, what they be? They're not groin, but it's like another like hamstring. It's just not glutes at all, is it? It's hamstrings, isn't it? Oh, they certainly feel it after that first interval. So make sure and just reseat your seat a little bit. Sometimes it helps. Um, it's the you can two row people, or you, yeah, you can row two. Uh, people saying about you literally, literally lift up your backside, <sighs> pick up your butt. But if you kind of rock and ease that pressure of where your sit bones connect to the seat, how they're pressing down on your glutes, that can relieve the pressure a little bit, relieve the discomfort, if there is any. Because again, this is real full pushes from the legs. So it's understandable that there may be some element of discomfort if you're not used to doing that, which I'm not really. Right, when we get 15 seconds to go, if you want to do some light rowing to get the flywheel moving to help you on that first stroke, please do, okay? I want you to protect your back. So if that's going to help, then start it now. That was a quick four minutes. Must be said, 10 seconds to go. Seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one, go. Same again. Start off with the best of intentions for technique. Arms straight. Forward tilt. Good posture. 30 seconds gone. <clears throat> I'm really fatiguing already halfway there Thirty. Excuse me. Talk amongst yourselves. <sighs> like I said, couple of times so far in this plan this is really showing the importance of training at speed and holding performance intensity it's all very good doing a whole bunch of 30 minutes at 20 strokes a minute but I'm telling you, I got one minute into that interval and I mean I slowed down to 143 for a while anyway, giving me an average of 141.7 by the end but I think if it wasn't for the fact 
I was filming this, I probably would have eased right off. So, not looking forward to the third interval from that point of view. Now, if you're not, or if you didn't finish that second one in a similar position to me, then you aren't going fast enough. So for this last one, I want you to go as fast as you can. I'm still gonna try and get as close to 141 as I can. I really don't wanna see an average under, like I want it still to be 141 something. If I hit 142, I'll be disappointed, but it might happen. But if you find this easy, I wanna make sure this last one, you're a lot faster than the first two. This is not meant to be an easy session at all. shows how quickly you can lose power and pace 141.7 that's what 2k of hang on I can't do the maths <laughs> 3 point is that 3.3 times 4 is 12 say 14 is that a 645 644 2k maybe there's absolutely no way I could hold that right now. If I'm that beat after four minutes rest and only the second round of two minutes. I mean, it was 590 meters that time. So that's me done uh, 590 plus 594. So it's just under 1200 meters when I finished <laughs> just then, but I wouldn't fancy even doing a 2K at this pace. So it just shows how far I've come, I've slipped from injury and from COVID and things, but then that's why I'm doing this plan with you. So I can try and build up again. And that's why I'm rowing these two minutes in pretty much silence. <sighs> okay, 20 seconds to go. Get ready to do that light rowing if you want to. Oh, hopefully you've already started because there is 10 seconds to go. <sighs> Five, four, three, Two, one, go. technique. Remember to breathe. One more. Oh. 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 I can't find a comfortable position at all. Oh. 
I did it. Finish. One forty one point five at the end. So faster than interval two, even though by the halfway point I was miles behind. I just picked it up. So I was 141, 141.6, 141.5. Each one of them at 33. And I did 1,776 meters in case you're counting. So have a quick drink. I know I'm about to a three minute cool down via our zone. Where's my three minute? There we go. This gives us one minute of rowing to cool down and then two minutes of drills, or you can just use the whole three minutes to cool down. Oh. Oh. So here we go. Cool down at similar pace to the start of the warm-up, okay? Here we go in three, two, one. Oh. So just enough pressure to connect. And again, if you did today's row with enough power, you should really be even finding this little bit, oh, but it's okay. It's only a minute of this and then drills and a wee bit of stretching and then you'll be done. And it's a Friday for me, so for me, that means spaghetti bolognese, go in, have a shower. And have some spag ball with our new cats. Okay, take one foot out, put it on the ground, continue rowing with just one foot strapped in. Not much should change here, but apart from only having one leg strapped in, your stroke should still be smooth and even. You should be balanced on the seat not leaning to one side. Remember to just rock over the foot that's still in. Oh, one more here. Unstrap, other foot in, keep going. You don't need to strap or tighten the strap just yet. We'll do that for the last 30 seconds. Oh, let's just opens your hips up, kind of helps your hip flexors. Works well as a cool down as well as a warm up. One more here, then let's put both feet back in. You still don't need to st tighten straps, just legs straight. Roll with your back and arms. So swing over your hips, pull in your arms, out with your arms, swing forwards with your hips again. Or over your hips. It should be a hinge backwards and forwards, feeling that pick up of power with your back first, then your arms. All right, let's roll to the front, tighten your straps on the way, forward tilt, arms straight, and just push out from the front. Hold this position, don't worry about power. Okay, all I want you to think about is pressing your legs into the machine while holding a forwards tilt and straight arms. One more here. I've got two more. One more. I mean, this is a drill you can just do forever. Just to get used to it, is just holding this forwards position. I'm putting no pressure really through my legs. Just moving them so I can get used to keeping my arms straight and the forwards tilt. If you're the kind of person that comes in and then really pulls on the handle, try that drill for a while. Just 
lock in for a minute and just get used to that sensation. Then you can start adding power and then working on other nuances of your stroke. So, I recommend doing some stretching. Now, if you don't have time, obviously, if you've got to get back to your desk or whatever, then it's absolutely fine. I do recommend, at one point though, to stretch your quads and your hamstrings. Don't do it in the shower. I don't want you to fall over, okay? Uh, or you can follow Grumpy John up in the top corner. He will take you through uh, guided stretches, or I am gonna go through stretches on the machine too. Don't really know why I still run both versions, but hey, just in case. So, hamstrings first. Feet, I, I brace against the straps to start, which were loose after coming out after the cool down. So, hands up, fold forwards, okay? You're not bending your upper or lower back, you are folding forwards. That can hinge. Okay, so it's almost like you're bringing your chest towards your legs. You're not bending down, if you get what I mean. You're not rounding down. And then how you position your feet, how you sit on the chair, how much of a bend you have uh, in your knees and things, they all affect where that stretch goes. Right now, whatever I'm doing right now is getting it right into my hamstrings and kind of up at that top part that I was talking about that was getting a little bit tender. So hey, that was a good first gambit for me. Next up, put one leg on the rail, get your other leg, put it over the top so your ankle is against the side of your knee. Pull this leg across your body, hold it in place, hold onto the back of the machine and rotate, okay? And that twist in should give you a nice little stretch in your glutes. Again, changing angles of where this foot is, how much you're pulling across your arm, how much you rotate in, that all affects how much of a stretch you get into the glutes that you are stretching at the time. I'm gonna change and you'll see what I mean by where that foot goes in case you missed it. And then rotate in. And your back arm is a stability thing, but it's also an anchor for you to rotate into by moving that shoulder back as you rotate in, gives you that little anchor to make sure that you are properly getting the stretch into your glutes. We'll do quads next, which is when my head pops out the top of the screen. Oh. Flick your leg up behind you, hold your ankle against your backside, and then how much of a, a pull you put on your foot and how straight you get with your body, how angles are going on here, that all affects how much of a stretch to your, your quads you get. Now remember, it's your quads you're stretching here, not your hip flexors, okay? So the big part, not the part right up at the top. We're doing hip flexors next. Let's swap legs. Ooh. Good thing about doing this next to the machine is that you can quickly grab onto the monitor for a bit of stability if everything starts to go a little bit awry. <sighs> I mean, it's good for ankle mobility, if nothing else, that stability thing. It's why doing lifting weights with dumbbells can be better than using a barbell, because you have to use all your stabilizing muscles. So if you do a bench press, oh, if you do a bench press with uh, two dumbbells instead of a barbell, you have to get that, those stabilizing muscles involved as well. So, right, for hip flexors, you wanna go 90 degree, uh, angle on your back leg, 90 degree angle on your front leg, knee over your ankle, and then push your hip forwards. Okay, so that changes the angles. Your back leg opens up, your front leg shortens down. Uh, but you should feel, if you get a straight push of your hips and you still have a good posture, you should feel right up at the top, right up at your hips, that that muscle, your hip flexors, will get a nice little stretch. Again, this is when I encant the, the amazing Jeff Cavalier from Athlean X, who will take you in one of his videos through, um, do you actually need to stretch your hip flexors? Do you, is tightness that you have, I'm changing legs in case you weren't sure what I was doing. Um, yeah, is the tightness actually like a hamstring problem, not a hip flexor problem? Now I know I have very tight hamstrings, so I'm not entirely sure where my inflexibility from my legs is coming from right now. Now remember again, it's all about angles here, how you, where you position your body. If you lean too far forwards, it takes that stretch away from your hips. If you put your, or if I put my toes flat on the ground, it also completely takes away that hip flexor stretch. Whereas if I have a nice straight posture, 
my back foot is up on its toes, then I do get a nice stretch through my hip flexors. Ooh. Let's do forearms next. Hey, so forearms, clap your hands together, push them down, and then keep pushing them together as you bring them down. You should find underneath your forearms gets a nice little stretch here. And if you're pressing with your fingers together as well, or even you can go do 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 and like move them back and forwards. If you want just a little bit, push through your fingers, do a dance. Uh, that'll help just mobilize your fingers a little bit. Because if you, one thing I didn't say at any point today on the technique side of things, because I wasn't really talking technique much, but you have to make sure and hook your fingers over the handle rather than have a death grip. Um, and so your fingers, if you have a death grip especially, can get quite sore and crampy by the end. Uh, so having, even stretching, you see a lot of people do this and pull the fingers back, that stretches the wrist as well. I don't do that, because it hurts. <laughs> right, shoulders next, how oh, are you saying for end workout? Shoulders next, so high, bring that arm right across your body, pull it against you with the other arm, and then just find that rotation that you need in order to get the stretch into your shoulder. Again, your shoulders will have got used, obviously, but they shouldn't feel really, really sore by the end of today's row. If they are, then you're probably shrugging up your shoulders or taking the force too early in your shoulders by pulling too early, okay? The power should flow from your legs through your body into your hands, and nothing should really be getting in the way of that power. And it's only at the back of the stroke, when you pull in your arms to a finish, that you then use your arms, okay? So if you can really feel your arms uh, gunning for it right from the, the head of the stroke, right from the top, the catch, then you're probably bending your elbows too early, grabbing onto the, um, the stroke, and you might have a strong upper body, but trust me, your legs are stronger than your upper body, so you want to use them instead of your big bulging biceps. Why don't you use your legs and your big bulging biceps? <gasps> wow, think how fast you could be then. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, triceps next. This arm, my hand goes down to my spine, and then this arm just helps to kind of push it back further. Like I always say, from a shoulder mobility point of view, if I was able to get my this hand up my back and grab onto the fingers of my other hand and then pull this one down, that would be amazing. But I can't, because I have poor shoulder mobility. It's improving, that's the thing. Now that I've started doing like this guided stretch at the end of the row, and I'm stretching more, my flexibility is certainly a lot better than when I would kind of rant and rave at you for 10 minutes at the end of a row and then stretch for my body to completely cool down. Because that's the thing, you want to stretch a warm body at the end of a workout. You don't want to stretch cold. There's no point kind of walking into a gym, doing absolutely nothing and then stretching a cold muscle. In many ways, you're just kind of, you're more likely to injure yourself that way because your, your muscles are like, what? We've been sitting at a desk all day. What do you want us to do? Go away. Biceps for the, our last one. So. Ski jumper, okay? But then you want to thumb a ride. So rotate your thumbs outwards. I don't really think, if you if you were standing in the street like this, trying to thumb a taxi, I don't think any of them would stop for you. I think they'd be like, what's that loon doing? Anyway, so this will just give you a nice little stretch. Rotate outwards into your biceps. Uh, possibly just your chest as well, if you kind of squeeze your shoulder blades together at the same time. Quite like the idea of compound stretches. If you can have one stretch, one stretch to roll them all. <laughs> so yeah, thought that can be. Let's have, I like to give out a hashtag at the end of my row just to, so you, I know you made it this far through. And let's just have stretching, okay? So hashtag stretching, or the importance of stretching, the one and only stretch. The Lord of the Stretch. No, and that sounds like it should be a show in Vegas, doesn't it? <laughs> to Irish music. So, um, or what in Ireland, what they call music. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed today's row. It certainly was um, a fantastic one for me in terms of, it was rather hard. <laughs> it was a tough old workout. Uh, to expose myself, I mean, it's, like I said, if it wasn't for the fact that I was filming this, there's a good chance, because my mental state is still in that place where I'm like, it, I, I'm kind of having issues, kind of that performance intensity of holding it, just mentally I'm like, oh, why am I doing this? Filming this for you is giving me the accountability, knowing that my results then sit on ErgZone. Um, if you go to this session, to the RA1K week one, session five, you will see uh, how I just got on. You'll see the, was it 141, then 0.5 point, or 0.6.5, whatever it was. You'll see them sitting there. So I know that people can see how I got on. So I can't 
cheat my way out of this. I can't just stop and then put the, and kind of fake the, the data you see on screen. That's exactly what I just did. So the accountability side of making, <laughs> making these videos for you keeps me honest and made me push through there. So it's fantastic. So selfishly, this is why I'm loving recording this plan finally, is that I'm doing things on the machine that I haven't really wanted to do for ever since, well, let's say I got COVID in January. Let's say I was probably through it by May where I could probably start to train a lot harder, but I've kind of been hiding from the intensity stuff since May, basically, let's say. So now that we're at the end of August, I'm like, right, you know what? Put, put your big boy pants on and, and let's kind of go fast. And because I'm making this plan for you, it's keeping me accountable. So what I'm hoping is that because you've chosen to do this plan along with me, and especially because remember week one, session one, um, you'll have seen, hopefully you'll have heard the disappoint, disappointment in, in my voice. And I was like, is that as fast as, that's only as fast as I can roll right now. I kind of like, oh, crikey, I want to go faster. And even today, only managing to do that in 141 and change. It's like, oh my good grief, what's what's happened? How the, how the John has fallen. I was about to say mighty, but there's nothing mighty about John. Um, yeah, how, how far I've fallen since the days of doing like 637 2Ks and winning golds and stuff, I'd get laughed out. Admittedly, that was like six years ago. So um, yeah, um, so yes, yeah, so I'm hoping that while I'm getting the real motivation to continue here, hopefully you being on a plan anyway is helping, and then also seeing how I'm getting through this one will hopefully be helping you. Remember, all the data I put up on screen is only for reference. This isn't for you to strive for. Strive to be faster than you are tomorrow than you are today, if you get what I mean. The, don't worry about me. Don't worry about my heart rate. I've got like a low heart rate and stuff and it recovers quite quick just because of years of kind of doing fitness stuff. So don't worry about matching that. Don't worry about matching my pace. Don't worry about things like that. Stroke rate, maybe. I want you to get that stroke rate up, but don't worry about that stuff. Just put everything that you have into it and then get faster the next time. So when we come back to do a session like that again, you want your average to be like, what's my, my average across today was um let's see the average is 141.3 so i'm pretty sure this row comes up again later in this plan so i want to make sure my average for it is faster than 141.3 and then i'll be happy and that's the point of what we're doing is that we're not kind of going oh hang on i used to do a 304 1k right now i'm lucky if i could do a 321 k so therefore by next week i want to knock 15 seconds off my 1k time that's never going to happen that's going to probably take a couple of months of hard training for me to manage that like three months maybe um but if I can, after the end of this, what, four and a half, five week plan, if I can get a row like this, that average down to, let's hope like 137 instead of 141, I'll be happy, okay? So there we go. That's my rant for today. I am out. <laughs> I am out of rant. I want to go ahead and have my spaghetti. Uh, I did mention new cats, in case you care. We, uh, I used to have three cats and sadly uh, we lost one in 2020, another in 2021 and another one this year in 2022. Um, and it's been a, a few months where we've been like, oh, our babies have gone. And we saw two rescue cats that needed a home and the two, both Julie and I knew that it was time. It was time for us to get cats. This is when you know your kids are kind of uh, are getting older when you're like, we need cats. <laughs> so got two lovely little cats who are still getting used to the house. They're still like, who are you? Um, but yeah, little Lulu and Isa are settling in quite nicely. So I'm going to go and have some spaghetti, um, try and convince one of them to actually not run away from me. Um, and then that'll be my Friday night. I remember when I used to go to clubs and go disco dancing until four o'clock in the morning. Now I look forward to a plate of spaghetti, a non-alcoholic beer, and a nice curled up cat in my lap that I can stroke <laughs> while watching Sandman or Ozark or something. So anyway, right. I'm rambling, so I'm going to go. Thank you so much for doing this first week of the 1K plan, or whether you just did this as a standalone row. I hope you enjoyed it. Do leave me a comment. Let me know how you got on. I'll be interested to find out from some people as to whether you took a rest day after session four and then did this one, whereas I did one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I kind of, my legs were feeling it today. So not that I'm playing that as a whoosh, I'm tired card, but I'd be really interested to see if how you felt if you did it uh, on like five days in a row. Were you tired? If you took a rest day where you're feeling really fresh and like, wow, invigorated, woohoo. All right, so uh, either way, take a, leave me a comment, say hello, hi, woohoo, how are you? Um, check out some of my other videos that I have up here, the hundreds of workouts I've got, the myriad um, app review, whatever videos. I've got loads of them up here. You could spend an entire day just watching all my stuff. I mean, it'd be quite a dull day, to be honest, especially if you were just watching me rowing. Uh, but the other ones, you could just watch them and go, oh, this is quite, yeah, anyway, right. But yeah, and hit like, subscribe. 
if you want. So I will see you in a future video. Have a great weekend if you're watching this on a Friday. Have a great week if you're watching this on a uh, day of the week. Have a great whatever, birthday. What, tell me what special day you've got. Is it your anniversary? Who knows? So I will see you in another video. Until then, take care, be well, bye-bye.